and welcome to episode 72. You can't watch it. You're not invited. If you remember this episode, then you'll understand what I'm referencing. I have not pre-rewatched this, so that's just based on my memory, which we'll check shortly. If you want to also check my memory and support me, then do check out patreon.com slash Ashley Clements, where there is extra content. My name is Ashley Clements, and this is the Look Back Diaries. <laughs> I just remember yelling, here's what I recall. I recall that I and all of us were very excited to have Brie, Brianna Cuoco, who played Mary, on the Lizzie Bennet Diaries because she had been killing it over on the Lydia Bennet and she'd become part of our social group as well. So we were hanging out. I did already feel like I knew her a bit at this point, but we'd never gotten to work together. She's the only character who did not have to audition with me because at the time that we were casting Mary, we didn't know that she would ever appear on Lizzie's channel. And so I believe that she, no, that's not true. She's not the only character who'd never auditioned with me, but she's the only character who never auditioned with me who then acted with me because I also did not audition with the Maria Luz. But I do remember that I watched the audition tapes and, you know, said who was my favorite, but we did not do a cam read. So we were very excited to have her on the show. Felt like we knew how it was gonna go and then we were all delightedly surprised. Let's take a look. Okay. Yes, well, we, I mean, we had a plan. And you got dressed up for it, apparently. We know I had to use all my clothes. Oh, things are going badly. Fire. <laughs> yeah, it does feel like we would have garden gnomes, doesn't it? Oh, Sound, there's a lot of sound added in this one because the glass breaking, obviously, the music was added afterwards. Music is always added afterwards in things because otherwise it's impossible to cut. I love the not the bathroom line with the like, that's happened a million times. It's also very fun that this is a Kate episode because it's kind of not one that you would like assume was Kate. But Rachel was doing like very heavy Lydia fight stuff and also she had done episode 69 and so this is the only episode with Mary in it not written by Rachel Kiley. I can't remember if she was actually out in the hall yelling or if, I mean it was definitely recorded separately as wild lines to be like put in properly but for timing probably someone was reading them if she wasn't in the hallway reading them then probably Margaret was reading them from behind camera. There's a good bit. There's a good bit. Also a recurring bit that Lizzie doesn't remember her own cousin, which is a bit terrible of Lizzie, but it's funny, so we kept doing it. I'd rather be hijacked by you right now than her. Don't worry. Once I get some cake into her, she'll call me. Audrey for her. See, this is the dynamic we expect. This we had seen Bree's Mary. We knew how this was kind of gonna go, vibe-wise. I don't know who that emergency cleanup crew would be, but... Oh, that's... that's... <laughs> See, it was like very Mary, right? She's understated, she's... that's the humor. And so we get humor with these two, with Lizzie being, you know, a very extroverted character and Mary being a very introverted character. Mm. Well, that's... you know, I don't know that we'd make that joke now. Um, Yeah, how? What did I? Oh! 
<laughs> this is so exciting. <laughs> I, I enjoy the grug. Had had Lizzie printed this up in advance? You know, uh, unclear. Maybe she's a printer in her room and she just typed it up real fast right now. Here's our very worst actor ever in costume theater, but in the most hilarious and delightful way. I just, it's, it, it kills me. It's so, I love, that's also like such, oh, this is such a good episode. And here I am doing man voice again. It's not. Sorry. Right. Although on Maine, yeah, we'll never see him again. We'll hear about him though. We'll hear about him. And that, should, look, if everyone deserves tea, then cake solves everything. Should probably be on like a dessert plate. It's certainly also like merch worthy. I would say. Okay, here is part of why this is so delightful. Obviously, like. Bree's fantastic. But, and this is a little bit of what Jay and I were talking about with the satisfaction of when an actor comes in and makes what you wrote for them, like, just really sing, and then sometimes makes it even better with an unexpected choice. I don't remember, wait, I can look it up. Perfect. This is exactly what the script says. Lizzie is Wickham with goggles on her head. Mary is Lizzie in her plaid shirt. Mary is reading lines. Note, Mary is all caps terrible at reading her lines and supremely uncomfortable playing a role. People being intentionally bad actors just happens to be one of the things that I enjoy. It's it, to me, maybe because I am an actor, I don't know, how do you feel about it? A very enjoyable trope but Brie did it like so well. <laughs> and the yelling part is in all caps, but I still don't think anyone expected her to actually like yell like that. I don't know. I remember it being very surprising. I remember it being like just so enjoyably better than I even thought it was going to be. It's an episode that a lot of us talk about as being just this like delightful surprise because we did not know how freaking funny Brie was going to be in it. It's very different than anything that Mary had gotten to do. And it's a great use of costume theater as well because in addition to conveying the information that we convey through costume theater, we always have the dynamic with Mary of being with a more extroverted, outgoing, attention-seeking character. And that's primarily been Lydia, but here she is with Lizzie, and Mary is not a character who, on her own, would probably choose to be on camera a lot. But so we think we know that dynamic. We think we know the dynamic of her basically being the straight character to some zanier characters. And that dynamic shifts throughout the show, kind of depending on who Lizzie's with, right? Lizzie is often the straight character, but also, and I mean that in the comedy sense of the straight man and the the kind of funny man. Is that, <laughs> that's not what they call the opposite of the straight man. But in the comedy structure of straight man, that person is essentially the audience's lens in a way, because they're the one going, wow, the way that you're behaving is nuts right? We're all seeing how this is nuts. And that's very enjoyable to the audience. And because Lizzie is our main connection to the audience and giving us all her opinions, for the most part, it is 
kind of Lizzie being straight man, looking at people going like, well, that person, look at the, Ricky Collins is saying weird things and Lydia is being nuts and this person over here. I am often playing the straight person. And to start, we get the dynamic where Mary is the straight person because that is more often who her character is. And then there's this really enjoyable switch because her acting is so bizarre and over the top and terrible. And Lizzie's kind of like, wow, I'm gonna keep doing this, but you're super weird <laughs> at this. Then we get the really enjoyable, unexpected turn as well of Mary being super into the Darcy gossip, which also feels sort of surprising based on who we know Mary to be. But of course, everyone is interested in the Darcy Lizzie gossip. And then she just very unexpectedly gets like super invested and emotional while still being bad at the acting part. It just... I mean, I don't know, does me analyzing it just take away from its pure brilliance? It's a delight. It's also an entirely unnecessary episode, right? Like, from the plot perspective, we knew there was going to be a party. We could skip straight to the aftermath. We don't actually need this episode. Plot-wise, we don't necessarily, like, gain anything. But like some of our other funniest episodes, that means that there's a lot of room to play because there's less that really needs to be accomplished and we're here to have fun. And it, it was just very fun. It was very fun to welcome Brie to the set and then to just have her like crush it. And as I recall, the audience also thoroughly enjoyed this. Let's check it out. Catlife333 says, I never realized how crazy Lizzie actually is until she's sitting next to normal cousin Mary. Ha ha. See, that's the straight person thing that I'm talking about. Estelle Timer Wilcox says, do you think Darcy has virtues? Because it's like, I don't care, but I think it'd be really interesting if you changed your mind about him. I love Mary. Yes, extremely Extremely enjoyable. Esme Yalindar says, I love how Mary is mouthing Lizzie's lines at 350 and playing up the whole complete novice at acting bit. It's these little bits of characterization that make this great. Wait, I forgot about that. Sorry, now we're going back and we're looking at it. Oh, that's really funny. She's doing like she's following along and she doesn't know what's gonna come next. Ugh, that's great. Okay. Aw, Leah Markham says this episode makes me feel like Mary and Lizzie could have been best friends or at least in league with Charlotte and Jane. I mean, they're both bookworms, introverts, and intellectuals. Yeah, but she's friends with Lydia and that's important for Lydia. It's also, you know, probably not uh, great for their friendship that Lizzie literally keeps forgetting about Mary. Yeah, Marianne L says, I always find it sad how Lizzie forgets Mary. The worst part is they could really get along. Agreed. It was a bit, well, and the bit started, for, in case you don't recall, the reason that that entire joke was written was because we were adding Mary in later, because there was backlash to the idea of cutting Mary and Kitty. So when the writers came up with ways to include those characters, the joke was that we kept forgetting <laughs> that we had a cousin named Mary because we hadn't mentioned her yet. Wow, Just Cogitating says, I think Mary's acting here might be my favorite part of this entire series. You know what? Fair. It's clearly one of my favorites. Jasmine Mayo notes that Mary ships it. She totally ships it. I know, it's very enjoyable. Miriam24601 says, always a favorite episode because of Mary. She's so proud of her acting. It's adorable. Agreed, agreed. Yes, Dessa's art says, oh, Mary does the whole, you're not invited, you can't come tonight. I literally die. I don't know why, but the way she says it is hilarious. I do know why. It's because it has the element of surprise. You're not expecting it, so when it happens, it's very funny. Oh, Cornish philosopher, that's fair. One of my few complaints about the series is this is Mary's final appearance and we don't get any closure on her subplot and she's a great character who is just sidelined. Agreed, she deserves better, but if you would like to know more about what happens to Mary, check out The Adventures of Lydia Bennett, I think is the name of the book, co-written by Rachel Kiley and Kate Rorick, which, unlike The Secret Diary of Lizzie Bennett, actually tells a new story. It is actually 
events after the end of the main series, and you can catch up with Lydia and Mary. I'm sorry, I don't have that one because I'm not on the cover of it. Nobody gave me a free copy of it <laughs> because I didn't buy this. And from a writing perspective, it's so great to have this very funny, light episode before we get into some more serious episodes, which we will next time.